you can't use gold and silver, what would you do? Simple. You turn to whatever commodity is in abundant supply in the market. They can't ban that. How you go ban, ban rice in Indonesia? You fool or what? How you go ban sugar in, in Cuba? Huh? If they ban gold, they do not allow us to use gold, we will turn to commodities which are in plentiful supply and which have a shelf life like wheat, like barley, like dates, like salt. So if we're in Cuba and we want to bring back Sunda money, we go use sugar. And if we're in Java, in Indonesia, and we want to bring back Sunda money, we go use rice. Government can't stop we. How you go ban rice? How you go ban sugar? Yes, some of you may talk about the advantages of barter. But as I pointed out to you, barter has its limitations. You need to turn to money. Just one last thing to say. And that is that anyone, anyone who attempts to return to the Quran and Sunnah will never walk alone. You will never walk alone. Whoever attempts to bring back the Quran and the Sunnah will always have Allah with him. Haqqun alayna nasrul mu'mineen. It is incumbent upon us, obligatory on us, to come to your help. And if Allah is on your side, don't bother about those who are opposed to you. Your reward is sure with him. When you stand before him on the last day, while others are trembling with fear, you will know no fear. And when the judgment is delivered and others are weeping, you will know no grief. And so we end our session with these words. I leave behind me two things. So long as you hold on to them, you will never go astray. The book of Allah and my sunnah. And even if you have to be only one man, standing alone, only one, if you attempt to bring back the book of Allah and the sunnah, Allah will reward you. Success and failure are not in your hands, in his hands. And you will not be judged by the yardstick of success or failure. Whether the Muslim village is built or not in this country is by Allah's leave. You will be judged by the effort that you made and you will be judged by the niyat or the intention with, with, with which you made that effort. So we pray that our out of this seminar will come a thousand hearts which will beat for the rest of your lives to try to bring back the Quran and Sunnah insofar as money is concerned, insofar as the use of money is concerned, and insofar as the prohibitions concerning the use of money are concerned. Rabbana <laughs> taqabbal minna. إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم برحمةك يا أرحم الراحمين. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. Now then.
Questions? Do we have a Muslim market in Trinidad? A Muslim market, by my definition, what I mean by a Muslim market, is a market which is a free market and a fair market. So any market which is a free market and a fair market is a Muslim market. Okay? Scholars of international monetary economics, scholars of international economics, at the State University of New York in upstate Binghamton, who have been able to achieve a status of some of the leading thinkers in the world. These people at Binghamton, they have said it, I did not, that the last free and fair market that the world had was the market of the Ottoman Islamic Empire. Because these fellows could see and understand what happened in the world. And so a Muslim market is a free and a fair market, which does not, does not give any advantage to a Muslim over a non-Muslim. No. A level playing field for everybody, no matter what religion you belong to. You plant, you reap, you plant, you go reap. A free market is a market in which there are no fixed prices. A man came to the Prophet والسلام, and complained, O oh, Messenger of Allah, price too high. Fix the price. Tomato must be $18 a pound. The Prophet said no. Once the Prophet said no, you have to be brave to come back again. Eh? But you come back again a second time. O oh, Messenger of Allah, price too high. Fix price. Prophet said, Prophet said no. You know the man come back a third time? And the third time the Prophet said no, but we could have raised our hands and prayed to Allah that he may bring down the prices. And so in a Muslim market, there are no fixed prices. There is no fixed price for goods, no fixed price for services, and no fixed price for wages. That's a free market. So you ain't gonna have no such thing as minimum wage legislation. They just have minimum wage, but they don't have maximum wage legislation. You notice that? So that's the first definition of a Muslim market. It's a free and a fair market. Wherever Muslims can restore such a market, they should do it. But it is not possible today for such a market to be restored unless it be restored by people who know what is a free and a fair market, which will be people who know the Quran and who know the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And so my further definition of a Muslim market in today's context would be a market established by Muslims who know the Sunnah. And when they've established that market, it gives no preference to a Muslim over a non-Muslim. Such a market, I believe, is possible today only in a remotely located Muslim village. So it does not offer any threat to the economy of the modern state. Such a market does not exist in Trinidad now. But I believe that it is possible in Trinidad. At least we should make the effort. We have already acquired 32 acres of land. In fact, my grandfather bought it in 1941. And there's a river running through the land. It belongs to my family. And there's a river running through the land and the river so deep you could drown in it. You could have boats on that river. 
and the sea is only half a mile away. So it is advantageously located, excellent location. And we're now moving to get the land surveyed and then we're going to ask for permission to put up a limited number of houses alongside the riverbank. Maybe about 30 or 40, but it won't be open for everybody. Oh no, are we not going to advise it, uh, advertise it to the public? We go pick and choose who we sell into. And if you're young and you just get married, you have a better chance than if you have a white beard. <laughs> Because if you're young and you just get married, we know you still have 40 years ahead of you. Inshallah. That is a pilot project, small. But at least it's a beginning. That economy of that village would be supported with fish farming. We're going to dig ponds. So we need some tractor for that. And the earth that we take out from the ponds will go towards filling the land because it's rice land. And it's flooding in rainy season. And that is another asset to us. Where land does flood, nobody wants to go and live there. So we easy. <laughs> we easy over there. We have no worries. We just have to put up with the inconvenience of a few days of flooding every year. If Bangladesh, half of Bangladesh is beyond the water. Half, you know, the country. So why is a few days of flooding? If Kaparo could, turn, could, could take care of flooding for so long, why can't we? Fish farming in the pond. So the village would have at least this much of an economic base. Pardon me? Well, you go, we, need, we have the engineer here. In addition, there is no bridge across the river. Alhamdulillah. So we we'll build our bridge. And when we build our bridge, no motorcar can go over that bridge. You can't even take bicycle across that bridge, only for walking over. So that preserves the land across the river preserves its anonymity. And the land across the river is where we build what may be described as the Muslim resort, the weekend Muslim village. You could take Friday afternoon off once a month hmm? and bring your dolahin and bring all the children. And you come and you have Juma. We have a big shed, karat roof shed, and we have the Salatul Juma there. It'll be like a holiday. And after the Juma is over, whole family sit down and eat some pilaw and so on. And then you spend the weekend. Weekend village. A lot of fun and games because you have boats on the river. You have donkey to ride. You have a horse to ride. Ponies to ride because you have place to ride horses. Children will love it. The women will love it. Because the women will have their rights restored in this Muslim village. Because nobody can stop them from coming to the masjid. And when they come to the masjid, we put them upstairs. And we put them in some annex. And we put in no barrier between them and the men. Oh no. We have them the way they were in Medina. Men in the front and women in the back. And so when the women pray in this masjid, They'll pray with both their ears and their eyes. We have few Trinidad masjid like that. Few. Hmm? And when we go down in Sijda, the woman will have to stay down in Sijda longer than the men. Why? Because the Prophet asked him to do that. When the Imam says, Allahu Akbar, to raise your head from Sijda, the woman will have to stay in sajda longer so the men can sit up so that the women are not presented
which are in plentiful supply and which have a shelf life like wheat, like barley, like dates, like salt. So if we're in Cuba and we want to bring back Sunda money, we go use sugar. And if we're in Java, in Indonesia, and we want to bring back Sunda money, we go use rice. Government can't stop me. How you go ban rice? <laughs> How you go us? Obligatory on us to come to your help. And if Allah is on your side, don't bother about those who are opposed to you. Your reward is sure with him. When you stand before him on the last day, while others are trembling, you can't use gold and silver. What would you do? Simple. You turn to whatever commodity is in abundant supply in the market. They can't ban that. How you go ban, ban rice in Indonesia? You fool or what? How you go ban sugar in, in Cuba? Huh? If they ban gold, they do not allow us to use gold. We will turn to commodities. Ban sugar. Yes, some of you may talk about the advantages of barter. But as I pointed out to you, barter has its limitations. You need to turn to money. Just one last thing to say. And that is that anyone, anyone who attempts to return to the Quran and Sunnah will never walk alone. You will never walk alone. Whoever attempts to bring back the Quran and the Sunnah will always have Allah with him. It is incumbent upon